The thing about horses that really fascinates me is that they are, I think, the most obliging and beautiful of the domestic species. They have served us without civility and they're extremely noble animals. For me, being around horses is just a wonderful place to be. I'm a vet and a riding instructor and I think I'm very privileged that I can work with horses and I just love their strength, their nobility, their beauty and all of the things that they can do for us. And if we treat them well, we've got a lifetime companion and that's why riding horses is a really important and unique privilege. It's not a ride. My name's Paul McGreevy. I'm a professor at the University of Sydney in the Faculty of Veterinary Science, and I specialise there in animal behaviour and animal welfare science. And what we're going to do today, this is my property, we're going to play with some of my own horses and focus on one youngster, her name is Sierra, and she's rising three, which means she's roughly two and a half years old. Good girl. And we're going to look at some of the principles of equitation science, which is the scientific approach to horse training and horse handling. And we're going to focus on foundation training. Okay. Now foundation training is the earliest training that the, the horse gets before it's ridden. Okay. And we're going to break down the steps that are required to gently get the horse prepared for its future as a riding horse. Okay. And it's called foundation training because the evidence from the scientific data is that this is the gentlest way of building a foundation on which we can build a, a huge career for a successful horse. Essentially it replaces what we used to call breaking in because we don't want to break anything here. We really want to, to build a nice strong foundation. And what we'll be focusing on is the importance of timing and consistency to produce a relaxed horse. This is the very lovely Sierra. She's a three quarters Frisian. She's a filly and she's really just begun her training under saddle um, so she's had a few sessions with the saddle on her back um, with the stirrups down so she's begun to feel that sort of unusual feeling that she'll get bef before and part of being ridden um, by a rider. We know that the halter is a way of applying negative reinforcement so it's applying pressure that we must release when we see what we want to see when we see what we're looking for and the halter can apply pressure on the bridge of the nose here or just behind the ears at the pole. Obviously if we apply pressure at the nose the horse is going to slow down or stop or move backwards. So we'll just see her moving backwards. You can see when she moves backwards I take my pressure off her. Good girl. When we want her to move forward we're going to apply forward pressure, forward tension, forward good girl. And that's just working on the back of her head. Stand, good girl, very good. So the important thing is not to keep nagging at the horse, not to keep applying relentless pressure because the horse will just get used to that. And in fact, that's what happens when we apply relentless pressure to the mouth. We get a horse with a hard mouth. So the important thing is to be very careful about removing the, the pressure when we see the horse respond appropriately. We're strengthening, reinforcing the behaviour by removing something that was slightly uncomfortable. That's why it's called negative reinforcement. One of the most important things when you're establishing a routine is do what you're going to be doing when you're working the horse. So this horse will eventually go into ridden work. So I'll start by picking her feet up. Once we've done the feet, we can groom her. And this is a great opportunity to feel all over, but also to strengthen the bond that you have with her. Horses are very tactile animals and we know that there are areas in their body that are quite rewarding to be groomed. So 
we can start grooming under here, for instance, knowing that that's a, a place that horses groom each other. And we're going in the direction of the horse's coat. Um, certainly this dislodges dust, as you can see. Um, but it, it also allows me to check for any injuries, um, any skin infections, and also get her used to being handled all over. And most horses begin to find this very satisfying because you're able to reach areas that they can't reach. What we do when, when we're touching somewhere that's sensitive is that we ensure that the horse does not struggle to remove our hand. So for instance, if the horse is sensitive around the ears, we must keep the hand there until we're ready. Otherwise, the horse will learn to become head shy or, or timid around having its ears felt. So when I'm ready, I remove my hand. And she's just learned that nothing more bad will happen. I'm not gonna hurt her, but she, she should remain still. Let's just try that again. Good girl. One of the most important things about looking after a horse is looking after its feet. There's a very famous expression, no foot, no horse, because if the feet aren't right, we can't use the horse. And so we have to get all horses used to having their feet examined. And the way we do that is, even with a baby foal, we get them used to picking up their feet. And we apply a little bit of pressure till the foot is lifted, and then we take the pressure away. And that's called negative reinforcement. We're rewarding the horse by taking the pressure away. Let's try it. So run your hand down and just lift the foot up. And we're going to keep it there until we're content that we've done the job. Don't let her snatch it down. So we'll pick any dirt out from these parts of the foot. And what with a young horse, I also prepare her for the day that she might be shod by just tapping the foot. So I'll just get her used to that. And when I'm ready, I'll put the foot down. I'm ready. Good girl. The next thing we, we do is we get the horse used to being handled all over. We've done that with our hands, but what we like to do when the horse will stand reasonably quietly, tied up, is we start bagging them down. The way I start is just getting them used to a dressage whip. A dressage whip is just used as, as an irritant. So we can get a horse to move forward by tapping the flank where the rider's leg would be. We can get a horse to step backwards by tapping the foreleg until the horse steps back and then we stop the tapping. We can move the quarters by tapping the hind leg. But we never want the horse to be scared of the whip. It's very important. And the way we do that is introduce it very gradually and we can build up this process of bagging, starting with this just as a sort of fishing rod, as a, as a, as a rod to, to an extension of our arms. So because horses like the base of the neck being groomed, it makes sense to start there. We can lower the heart rate that way, which is a great thing for horses. And then just gradually move this over the horse's body. So it's just an extension of my arm and who knows, she may be slightly itchy there, so that could be quite rewarding. But it's quite a surprise for her to find that I can reach that far. And I never want her scared of the whip. The whip must not be used as an instrument of pain or fear because we want the horse calm for all its work and all its lessons. Very good. Very good. That's your whip. So that was a good lesson. Once we can be assured that she's going to be calm, we can move on to putting more aversive and scary things at the end of our fishing rod. The process of shaping is that we build steps up gradually to the ultimate behaviour that we want. We don't ask for the fully, fully formed behaviour first. We just take little baby steps. And so once we've got her used to the whip on its own and the feel of that, we can add something quite visual. 
this is an old t-shirt that singlet that needs a good wash and we're going to use that to bag her down get her used to having all of this on her it's quite quiet and soft but it's a bit more aversive than just the whip alone and anything that's that's not a flight response is fine with me she can investigate me as long as she's not panicking about this that's absolutely fine that's excellent. And we'll just finish with her face. Good girl. Good girl. Some horses like their forehead being rubbed, some don't. She does. She's trying to groom me back now. So the head went down and I was very happy to reward that. So this flappy thing has become a predictor of something quite nice. Scratches and, and food rewards. Good girl. The next step in this process that can take weeks is to add this bubble wrap. This quite aversive sound. Um, but it's, it's only a small piece of bubble wrap and we're just going to very gently groom her all over with that and we can even go on the other side and get her used to being handled by something that she didn't expect to find there and all of this is is very gradually built up but because she's a foal that's enjoyed being groomed we can keep going back to this area and this area and allow these aversive things to predict the arrival of something really excellent and I tend to end on the face because I want this to be a nice experience for her and the third step is to add the noise, the really quite aversive, unpleasant noise of a carrier bag. Yuck. Um, so what we'll do is we'll do, as we, be, we did before, just approach her with this, let her sniff it. Good girl. And go over her in, in the areas that are safe and then add other areas as we go round. And if she moves, then I know I've gone too far too fast. Underneath, that can be quite scary. She's very good. That's very good. There's lots of older horses that can't cope with this, but because we take our time, we can get her used to this sort of scariness. And it sets her up for carrying a rider and, and carrying... Um, a, a rug or a saddle. Um, that's quite nice, isn't it? Itching your face on that. We know that we communicate with the horse through the bit using our, our reins as well as our legs and our seat. So it's important to be careful about introducing the bit in a gentle, humane way. And it's a piece of cold metal after all. So the way I introduce the bit is to make it associated with food. Um, if the horse is tolerant of having this in its mouth, then it actually scores a food treat. So let's see how we go. Are you ready for your food treat? You have to have your bit first, remember? So this is where you wish you had an extra pair of hands, but she's been trained to actually open her mouth and look forward to that bit. I'm going to whistle. So that tells her she's done the right thing and she can expect a food reward. Want the head down a bit and there she can get her food reward. She's going to be a big horse when she grows up. So we want the head down, wants the bits in the mouth so that we can fiddle with the, the brow piece and the, the crown piece. And then we can just get her used to the strap underneath her throat. And then she'll just learn how to accommodate that 
that piece of metal in her mouth. Um, we've got to, to transfer some of the signals from the lead rain to the, the, the rains themselves and that's a process we call Pavlovian conditioning, so one predicts the other. But at the moment she's just getting used to the feel of it in her mouth. She's very relaxed, she hasn't got her tongue over the bit. Um, she's gently chewing um, and, and, and she is relaxed, which is a good result. What we're going to do now is introduce her to the sur single, which is just a belly band really, with a bit of cushioning to protect the, the, the spine. And here we're just really wanting her to stay still, that's all she has to do. And we want to produce a habitual stillness and we're going to do that with um, repetition and consistency. So the way I put this on, certainly in the first few stages, has to be very predictable for her. So I'll certainly let her smell it if she wants to smell it. She doesn't want to smell it. And then I'll pass it over her back. Just let her know it's there. Then reach underneath. And then just very gradually tighten it. What I do with this is, once she's got that feeling of constant mild pressure and she's relaxed, I'll reward her. So that becomes a predictor of rewards, not scariness. Once she's comfortable with the, that constant pressure, we can take her out of this pen and we can show you her in the arena with a tiny bit of lunging. Um, so it's pressure that's, that's relentless. It's going to, to be pressure that she simply has to habituate to. Um, and it's going to feel different at different gates. So when we walk forward, it's going to feel different. And when we go into trot, trot on, it's going to feel different again. Trot on, walking or hawk. <laughs> And we'll have to do that in both directions because there's evidence that horses are left and right handed or hoofed and so walk on. There's a good chance that they actually feel the world differently, both the left and right side. Well, she looked pretty relaxed there, so we can move on to the next step because it's very important that we benchmark relaxation at every step. The next step will be putting this saddle cloth on her back, getting used to the feel of that. We'll hold it on just with the sur single that she knows already. Let her smell it if she wants to smell it. She still doesn't want to smell it. We'll put that on her back. Good girl, good girl. So that's obviously a larger area um, and it's going to feel different. Um, again, if she gets upset at any point, we can take that off and just calm her down again. So it's covering a wider area, it's going to feel different and it's certainly going to feel different. Does that feel different? Once she's relaxed, we can reward her with a, a food reward. So again, that new sensation is actually good news for her. And then we can take her into the arena and see what she's like with that new feel all over her. Walk on. Good girl, walk on. Good girl. That's nice and relaxed. Lovely, she's very relaxed, that's great. She could almost go to sleep. Sit. Good girl, walk on, walk on. Good girl, and we'll try trot, trot on. Good girl, trot on, trot on, trot on, trot on, trot on. Good girl, walking, walking, walk on. No, no, <laughs> this way, good girl. Walk on, good girl, walk on, good girl, stand. And then we're going to try her in the opposite direction. Walk on, good girl, good girl. So she's nice and relaxed, this is great. That's very good, good girl. Walk on, good girl, walk on, good girl, stand. Stand.
Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Walk on. Trot on. Trot on. Trot on. Good girl. Trot on. Trot on. Good girl. Trot on. Walking. Good girl. Walk on. Good girl. Walk on. Stand. <whistles> Lovely. Okay, we're going pretty well now, so it's time to introduce the saddle. The saddle cloth's already in place. We'll just let her have a sniff of the saddle. And of course it's heavier than anything she's had on her back before. So we're going to land it on her back very gently. Good girl. Her head went up then. She was aware of that new stimulus, so we're just gentling her down. Good girl, good girl. And we've just got to reach around and put the girth in a position where we can tighten it. So I'm just going to reach around and do that. And if at any point she starts to react, I'm, I've got to be ready to actually remove the saddle myself um, so that she doesn't have it suddenly appear beside her, having, having um, thrown off her back herself. And again, we're going to be very gentle here. And we do this in steps so that she doesn't get alarmed by that pinching, because that is, again, a different feel. Good girl. So whenever we f feed horses by hand, we use that whistle to avoid getting mugged. It's very important. She only expects food when she's heard that whistle. So it stops that ram raid. And now she's ready to go into the arena, so we can do a bit more lunging and see how she goes with that. We'll have to check what she's like with the saddle as it is, and then we'll take the stirrups down and see how she is with them knocking about. Good girl. Walk on. Good girl. Walk on. Good girl. And then trot. Trot on. Trot on. Trot on. Good girl. That's a bit of a rush. Trot on. Walking. Good girl. OK, now we're going to pull the stirrups down because they'll wobble around and they might just touch her flanks, which is what a rider will do. So we need her to get used to that before we get on her. We'll just pull the stirrups down. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And the same again, just walking on. Good girl. Walk on. Walk on. Obviously at walk, the stirrups aren't going to, to, to have much impact. But at trot, they might, they might have more of an impact. Trot on, trot on. With foundation training, you can start from, the, from day one, but obviously you're going to build up very, very gradually. And over time, sometimes two or three years, you prepare the horse for its ridden work. It depends what sort of ridden work it's going to go into. Some people will leave a horse to mature until it's four or five before, before putting it into serious work. And what we're trying to do is very gently ensure that there are no surprises for the horse, that, that it's a very gradual introduction to carrying a rider. And so we have to think about preparing the horse to be led, Good girl. preparing the horse to be groomed, preparing the horse to pick its feet up, to accept the bit in the mouth, that cold piece of metal. We've got to prepare the horse to feel that constant pressure from the girth. Good girl and ultimately to feel the saddle on the horse's back. And then we use those sorts of tactile experiences 
and get the horse to respond to cues from the handler and they can be pressure or tension cues or verbal cues that keep the horse under the control of the human rather than the environment. In routine foundation training with a horse like Sierra who's only a baby, she's only two and a half, she'll get maybe 20-25 minutes of interaction with the human every day or so and then some blocks of, of time where she can just be a horse. So there might be periods of a, a, a month of, of training and then six weeks off because it seems very important for them to be horses for first and foremost. When I'm working with horses I always keep in mind that there are two really important principles to follow. Timing and consistency. If your timing's good then you can reward the behaviours that you actually want rather than something that's happened subsequently. And with good consistency, you always give the same cues to the animal so it knows what you want. And that's the same for all animal training. The best animal trainers are distinguished by having good timing and good consistency.